Welcome to the first holiday special episode of the Nuances Podcast. I hope you're all enjoying a happy, healthy, and safe holiday season with your loved ones. Last week, I sent out a request to our guests asking if they'd be willing to share a glimpse of what the holiday season was like in their household growing up and how it has changed over time. This was a bit last minute, but I'm so happy to say that many season one and season two guests pulled through. As always, there's nuance in each of the vignettes as each family makes the holiday season their own. I want to say a big thank you to all the guests who participated in this episode. I will have links to their episodes in the show notes for those that have aired already, and the other ones are coming soon. If you enjoy our podcast and want to support us for free, a quick rating or review on whichever platform you're listening to right now would be an amazing Christmas present for us. Ratings and reviews help us rank higher and reach more people like you who would enjoy our work. I'd like to remind you that we're also doing a giveaway for Tiffany's episode. So if you'd like to enter, make sure to go to that episode's show notes. There's instructions there. Basically, you just go to either Instagram or TikTok, follow both of our accounts, leave a comment, and we'll enter you in the draw. And we'll draw a name at random at the end of season two. And you will get something from Depot Market. And now let's hear from our guest and co host Hi, I'm Ariane Mila, a Filipino-American living in Austin, Texas. Christmas has always been such a fun time of the year. My family is pretty spread out, so some years my parents and I would travel over to Connecticut where most of my dad's side of the family lives, and I always loved visiting Connecticut over the holidays because around this time of year, the town my dad's family lived in looked just like a Christmas card. It was exactly out of one of those cheesy Hallmark holiday films. Freezing cold, snow, but inside the house was always toasty and warm and my family made everyone's favorite foods. But more often, my family would stay in our hometown on the southern border, where we'd celebrate with our Filipino community, who I also consider family. Even though as a child I was itching to leave, I realized when I left that the Rio Grande Valley will always feel most like home to me. Growing up in the valley, we had a large Filipino community, but because the town we lived in had a large Mexican cultural influence, we got to know and partook in those holiday traditions as well. And we noticed a lot of overlap in our cultural traditions. My family is Catholic, so on Christmas Eve, we'd all get dressed up and attend Simbanga Bay or Midnight Mass. The trick to staying awake during Midnight Mass is to nap right before. That way, you avoid falling asleep in front of baby Jesus, or worse, your tita who will give you an earful once she catches you snoozing. After Christmas Eve Midnight Mass, my family gets together and celebrates Noche Buena, where we have a light meal that usually consists of arroz caldo, also called lugao, which is one of my favorite Filipino foods. It's a hot rice porridge, similar to kanji, and it's perfect for the holidays and the cold weather. It's served with chicken, garlic, green onions, and a dash of calamansi juice, which comes from a Filipino citrus fruit that tastes sort of like a cross between a lime and an orange. For Noche Buena, we also have pan de sal with ham and queso de bola, and you can't forget the hot chocolate, or chocolate. Filipino chocolate is typically made from cacao tablets that you can get at Filipino grocery stores, but since living in the valley, my parents also often have abuelita for Noche Buena. Christmas Day is a lot more laid back. We spend it in our pajamas, and my mom has since begun coordinating so that we all have matching Christmas PJs, including our dogs, and we exchange an open presents and just spend the day enjoying each other's company. We'll usually have Christmas movies on all day, and in late afternoon, we'll sit down for Christmas dinner. On our table for Christmas dinner, you'll find crispy pata, which is a classic Filipino dish for the holidays, leche flan, lumpia, tamales, honey glazed ham, and of course, Filipino spaghetti. Even now that I'm older, Christmas still looks a lot like it did when I was a kid. There's not much I'd change about my family's Christmas traditions. Holidays for us have always been about remembering what truly matters and spending time with the people who truly matter. From my family to yours, Maligayan Pasco. Hi, my name is Offering Rain. I'm Indian and Ecuadorian, first generation New Yorker. Growing up, I never really officially celebrated any holidays. My dad would put up Christmas light and we'd exchange gifts. My mom's side was similar. We would exchange gifts and they would set up a nice tree, so I'd often visit them. Over the years, especially recently, my partner and I have developed our own traditions around this time of year where we really just make a space to create light and love and joy during the middle of winter. It is really nice to have that. We'll also watch Christmas-related movies like The Little Drummer Boy or Charlie Brown and sort of indulge in some holiday media. And that also is really nice to do with my partner. So now we're 
creating our own traditions around winter and around creating light in winter and being warm in winter and being surrounded by love in winter. And that's, that's how we choose to celebrate the holidays. Hello, my name is Rahul Borkar. I am from Louisville, Kentucky. I am a record producer, artist, I wear a few hats in the music field. My family is from India. My sister and I were both born here. We are first generation Indian American. So yeah, so I'm supposed to talk about Christmas. Christmas is my jam. I love Christmas so much. Growing up, I know I was pretty lucky because it was really, really important to my parents for my sister and I to not feel left out socially growing up. So if there's a holiday celebrated at school, we celebrated it, whether it be Halloween, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. We did it all growing up and it was a blast. So basically my friends were celebrating something. We did the same thing. But yeah, Christmas was great. We didn't just celebrate Christmas. We had the lights, the Christmas tree, all that. When I was younger, I don't remember this, but my sister does. But my dad actually went out. My Indian dad, the physician from India, went out and bought a Santa outfit. He dressed up, tried to surprise my sister, and was not successful because he had his wedding ring on. Yeah, my young sister busted him. But yeah, that's a great memory to know, I mean, even though I don't remember it. It's just such a cool thing that my dad did that. We did the whole presence thing. When you're a kid, that's pretty much what you're so excited about. Looking back at it now, my parents really did everything they could for us, especially one year. I remember something called a Nintendo Game Boy had just come out. It was like the first portable gaming thing, and everybody wanted one. It was sold out everywhere. So I was sad up until basic Christmas Day. My mom surprised me. She went out and got it, and she didn't just go out and get it. She went out, stayed in line for hours, just so she could get me that present, just so she could make me smile. My parents are fantastic. So the way I look at Christmas is this. Even though I'm Hindu, obviously with Christmas you have the Christian stuff. But then also you have the other meanings of Christmas, family, making memories, just enjoying time with people you love. And it's a fantastic day. Even now, as an adult, I get just as excited for Christmas. I have a niece and nephew, so I get to see them, even though this year it'll be two days later, but I just love the positivity. I know some people aren't fortunate enough to always experience that, so my heart goes out to them, but I just love the fact that family comes together, exchanges gifts, does all that. It's a cozy day. Yeah, as far as it goes for me, my family, we celebrated Christmas just like our neighbors did. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. New Year's is right around the corner. One thing I'll end off with is go out and make memories. They last forever. So whatever you do, whatever family or friends you're with, make all those moments count. Make them count. Hi, I'm Tiffany Chow. I am Korean and I live in Maui, Hawaii. My family and I celebrate Christmas. We would always get a big live tree from a local tree grower in our neighborhood. We would decorate the tree and of course, being a little kid, loved presents. I was always obsessed with presents. And then we'd have a nice early dinner, Christmas dinner. When I went to the mainland, I went to college in Chicago, and then I worked in New York for 10 years, so both very cold places compared to Maui. It was really awesome experiencing a white Christmas, and then every time I would come home for Christmas, it almost didn't measure up, and it didn't feel like it was Christmas anymore whenever I happened to be back on Maui for Christmas, because it was usually warm. And now, as a 36-year-old, I just have a lot of things going on taking care of my brother Chris, and then I recently had a baby, so this year you haven't had a chance to get a tree and I'm not complaining that we're living on an island and looking at the ocean but after spending years in a cold climate for the winter it doesn't really feel like Christmas being here normally I would try to cook something I love making sourdough stuffing that's my favorite thing for Thanksgiving and Christmas is stuffing but I, I think I'm so tired with the baby and stuff I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that this year the hype and everything has died down just a little bit but I'm hoping once we get readjusted to our new family member I hope to make Christmas an enjoyable big thing like it was for me growing up and I really like that for my daughter and my brother Chris loves Christmas poor guy he really wants a Christmas tree we just haven't had a chance to get one we got him a wreath but we haven't hung it yet so that's that's how it has changed quite a bit over the years, but hoping to revamp our Christmas, hopefully next year, 2023. <laughs> Bonjour mes amis, hi friends. My name is Cece Chow and my pronouns are she and her. I am a first generation Chinese Canadian. I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My parents are both from British Hong Kong and came to Canada for school. Though my parents grew up in Hong Kong, they both assimilated relatively well into Western Canadian culture, and that included Christmas. I think most of the traditions around Christmas that we had were actually from my mom, who attended a Catholic school in Hong Kong. 
Christmas has always been wintry and mostly snowy. We do Christmas tree and the decorations and the gifts under the tree. On Christmas Eve, we'd have dinner of turkey or ham. And on the good years, we'd have roast beef with mashed or roast potatoes and veggies sautéed with butter and seasoned with salt and pepper. When Christmas morning came, we had a fancy breakfast before gathering around to open presents. And then, later in the afternoon, we'd get together with my aunts and uncles and cousins from my dad's side of the family for a potluck-style dinner that often included Chinese-style dishes. It was always a whirlwind, 36 hours of social activity that faded away as quickly as it came. And it made me depressed. Even as a child, I was never truly excited for Christmas time. It was too much energy, too much activity, too much chaos for an undiagnosed autistic kid who liked to hide away in her closet with the doors closed for hours at a time. As we grew up, got married, and had kiddos of our own, we continued these traditions. But it was even more than double the people, more than double the activity, and ten times the chaos. I wanted to hide away in the closet even more, but that was no longer acceptable as an adult. So I put on my mask, grit my teeth, was a good Chinese kid, and got through it by sheer willpower only to crash and need to isolate myself by hiding away in the basement, working on something or other in my workshop, or watching the fish in my aquariums. This year, things are going to be much, much, much more peaceful. Since coming out and transitioning, I've had a falling out with my parents and most of my aunts and uncles and cousins. It's serious enough that I have declined all invitations from them for our traditional get-togethers. As a child of Chinese parents who raised me as the heir to the family name, it was very, very hard to tell my elders and family that I was breaking tradition, as Western as those traditions may be, and refusing to see them at all over the holiday season. Instead, I will be having a quiet night with my cat Creamsicle on the 24th, and then on the morning of the 25th, I'll be having a cute little breakfast and opening presents with my two kids and my ex-spouse. I think this might be the first holiday season that I experience on my terms and with my own boundaries. This might end up being the most magical holiday season I've ever had. Hey, Nuances Podcast. I'm Rod Kim. I am Korean-American. I'm Korean by blood. Both my parents are Korean, but I grew up in Indiana, so I don't speak Korean. I don't read Korean or anything like that. I grew up a Hoosier. The holiday that we celebrated growing up was Christmas. It started off very much rooted in the church as I grew up in the church-going household. It's changed over the years, however, because I feel like some of the things stay traditions because of traditions, and then some other things that I felt like I didn't need to participate in anymore in, I don't. But I still love the holiday season, whatever anybody celebrates during the winter, and mine tends to be more Christmas-focused. But it's a mix of both secular and religious stuff. I still love the old Christmas carols and hymns. That's just going to be always ingrained in my childhood and in my legacy. Growing up, it was pretty much the American Midwest Christmas. Our parents would decorate the house. My parents had a little bit of Korean stuff around, but they tried their best. They really loved American culture. and just Everything was decorated like a log cabin and Christmas tree. And my dad in particular really loved Christmas and Thanksgiving decorations, actually. And we'd go to Christmas Eve service, candlelight vigils. My dad loved all the old Bing Crosby Christmas songs and stuff. A Christmas Story, the one with Ralphie and the Red Rider BB gun, that literally released either the year or the year after I was born. So my whole life has always associated A Christmas Story, the movie, with Christmas. And that's probably a really good example of how our family's Christmas went. It's always like there was the attempt at tradition, and nine times out of ten things went fine, but there was always quirks with them, right? Arguing or like things that went awry or somebody got hurt or whatever and stuff. Just a lot of different memories, so... It's hard to say there's any typical holiday. I do know up until the point when I went to college, it would be a tradition to go to my godmother's house for both Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner. It was usually part potluck, pot she cooked way too much food, and it was pretty awesome, so some good memories there. Now, when I celebrate, obviously my brother and I were grown around the house. He has his own family. I'm living in Los Angeles. My parents are still back in Indiana. I have realized over the last few years that the best gift and tradition I could give myself is my own time. 
because as an adult to a reasonable extent i just get the things i want throughout the year and so my personal tradition the one that stuck the most is the week between christmas day and new year's eve i don't do anything productive part of that happened by happenstance because of something that happened in 2020 that thing and the other part was eugene lee yang had tweeted out something either in 2020 or 2021 about how that week should be unproductive for you. And I was like, yeah, I'm a freelance musician, so I can schedule my year out to do that. So this year will be the third year of doing that where I try to get my freelance work done and up to a point where at the very least that last week, all I do is order takeout food, play video games and watch garbage movies with my cat and it is the best thing ever. So this year I'm playing Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Marvel's Avengers. They don't even have to be good games. I know I'm gonna like Assassin's Creed because I'm always working on that, but, and then I'm just gonna order a bunch of stuff from one of my favorite restaurants called Doomies. It's a vegan comfort food restaurant here in LA. They won't be open on Christmas, but I got donut friend donuts for myself today, and I just enjoy little treats like that. But yeah, I, not too eventful, but I guess if there's anything to take away, if you're a single freelance adult like myself, consider giving yourself your own time back for the holidays. I know it's probably the best thing overall and also the thing that I definitely look forward to the most every year and I can't wait. Actually, I wrapped up all my freelance gigs early this year so I have an extra week but I'm getting some housework done until then and then Christmas Day starts the beginning of my actual vacation. But anyway, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year and everything and best wishes to Nuances Podcast. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Chung Fat Yim. I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada, and my parents were born in Mauritius, and my ancestors are Chinese. So growing up, because my parents were new to the country, they tried their best to follow several different Canadian traditions. So around this time, during the holidays, they would put up a tree, they would listen to holiday music, and we would open presents around midnight, or at midnight on Christmas Day. I remember actually my brother and I would look at all the presents under a tree and strategically pick which present we wanted to open last. And it usually was the biggest one was saved for last. But because my parents worked hard for their money, they actually tend to get only one present that was shared between my brother and I. And looking back, I actually really appreciated this because it taught us how to share, but it also brought us closer because whatever gift it was, we would have to share it and play together. So the traditions that I remember most and that I was super excited for were things leading up to Christmas Day. I was my mom's little helper in terms of wrapping presents. Even though some of the presents were not for me, I would be super excited and totally on board. And then the second thing would be to help her with Christmas cards. So she would be the one to write the message inside the card, and I would be the one to write the mailing address, to put the stamp, to put the return address in case the mail gets sent back. And I loved having a stack of Christmas cards at the end where you would bring it to the post office for it to get delivered. I was like my favorite part. At school, my elementary school teachers, they did a great job of trying to create something memorable for you to bring home. So they would have us make Christmas ornaments every year. To this day, my parents still have them, and my mom swears that those are her favorite ones, even though I think that the ones that my brother and I made are questionable. Like, they're not, we were not super artistic, so I'm a bit surprised. But it was very nice of our teachers for them to make us create something for us to share and to give to our parents. One tradition that we still follow today is getting together as a family with our family members in Toronto. So we would get together on Christmas Day for dinner. And typically we would have either a turkey or ham as the centerpiece, and then a combination of Mauritian or Chinese or Canadian side dishes. And I always looked forward to eating my aunt's pate and gâteau pima or my uncle's briani. I crave them all year round. So for those of you who have not had Mauritian food before, I highly recommend it, especially if you like a fusion of Chinese, Indian, and African and French cuisine all together, like you're gonna love it. That's about it. I wish you all a wonderful holiday season and happy new year. Hi, my name is Edmund Chan. I am Chinese American. My parents are actually both from Hong Kong and they immigrated from Hong Kong to England where they did their nursing training and then traveled to South Texas where I was born and raised. 
Holiday time for us was always a time for our family, both our immediate family and our chosen family. When my parents immigrated to the United States, there were two other families from the UK that immigrated at the same time to the same city, and they were all nurses. So Christmas, Thanksgiving, those times we actually always spent all three little units together. Now, because the other two groups were also from the United Kingdom, we actually did a more British Christmas. Hong Kong was also a British colony at the time. So we always had a Christmas tree. We would do Christmas dinner. My father worked nights at the hospital in the psych unit. He was a psych nurse. We would do our immediate family, our Christmas presents. We would open those usually Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, depending on what my dad's schedule was. So immediate family was always either Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. And then in the evening, Christmas Day, the other families would then come over. It was Uncle Brian and Auntie Carol. They were a married couple. They also had two children the same age as my sister and me, and then Auntie Margaret, she was single. So those groups would then come over and we would have a big family dinner together. We had Christmas pudding every year, steamed for, I believe, an hour on the stove. We would have birds custard that we would pour on top and we always flambéed it with brandy. I remember as a young child, maybe not enjoying the Christmas pudding as much, but the custard sauce that you would put on top, I loved it. And I would douse my piece of Christmas pudding with that. I eventually developed an actual love for that traditional Christmas pudding. I love it. So whenever I can get one on my own, I do that as well. That tradition when we were all living at home stayed the same. Now, as we got older, I then went on to college, did that stuff with friends, and we would have our friends Christmas. But the interesting thing is I've also lived in the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, I also enjoyed experiencing their Christmas, which they celebrate the big day in the Netherlands is December 6th when Sinterklaas would come and you get the first letter of your name in chocolate. And so you would get that. And they had these little crowd nota, these little almost like gingerbread buttons. And those are also delicious. And so we would do that stuff. But as a family, we always made sure that we made time for the family stuff. My mom always made fruitcakes, and I remember one year, she didn't have time to make the fruitcakes. And she ended up forgetting that she had started soaking the candied fruit. And the following year, (laughs) she remembers, oh, I have this candied fruit and I need to make fruitcakes. She made fruitcakes from candied fruit that had been soaking for about a year. She made the fruitcakes. We each got one. I took mine up to college with me. My brother, who was working on his PhD while I was working on my bachelor's degree at the same university, also had his. And I remember going over to his lab where he was doing research. And over the course of the entire day, he had worked his way through the entire cake. And I just remember him saying, Edmund, I think I'm drunk off of the Christmas fruit cake. So, but yeah, that's how we would spend our Christmas together. And I hope everybody out there is having a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And yeah, thanks. Hi, my name is Charlene and I am a Filipina living in Austin, Texas. I think I've always loved Christmas and the holidays and New Year. I've been fortunate enough where this time of the year is very cheerful, nostalgic for me, and even exciting thinking about the upcoming year. I'm Catholic, and as a kid, my family, my mom, dad, and brother would go to Children's Mass at 5 p.m., and then we would come home, have dinner, and then open presents. So at the time, we weren't really ready for Midnight Mass. I have a lot of fond memories of Christmas as a kid. I honestly don't remember much about the food. But I remember the gifts, and one of my favorite gifts was a violin. My parents slash Santa got it for me because I was watching some fiddlers play on the television, and they just remember me being completely infatuated with the violin. So that ended up being one of my presents from Santa one year. On Christmas Day, we would usually go to my aunt and uncle's house. At the time, our extended family in the area was still fairly small. So it was three families, about 11 people, including aunt, uncles, and cousins. 
So we'd go over there on Christmas. We would exchange gifts with each other, probably watch some football, and we would have a mix of Filipino food and some American food, maybe like turkey and some of the sides. From what I remember, we always spent the night there, and then we'd go shopping the day after. Fast forward maybe a decade or even two decades later, our family has grown a lot. Some of our family has expanded and some have immigrated to the States, which is great. Some of our traditions have evolved, but Christmas Eve is still spent with immediate family. So Christmas Eve pre-pandemic, my family and I would go to Midnight Mass. Last couple of years, we've just watched it online. And every year now, my dad always makes arascaldo, which is a Filipino rice dish. And it's traditionally served in a bowl like a soup and has chicken in it. We don't get a lot of snow in Texas in December or period, but it's usually cold enough that the Roscaldo is a nice comforting dish on Christmas Eve. Somewhere along the line in the last few years, we always have cobbler with ice cream for dessert. Like I said, nowadays our family has grown a lot. And so on Christmas Day, we all get together in the DFW area. Every year it's at a different family member's house. And now in total, it's about 25 to 30 people if we're all there together. In the past, we would all buy gifts for each other, but with so many people, that gets expensive, obviously. So now we just draw names during Thanksgiving, actually, and we do a secret Santa. From what my mom has told me, the food selection has evolved even in the last few years to being strictly Filipino food. So during Thanksgiving is when we do the traditional American Thanksgiving food. We don't have any kind of Filipino food on the table. But for Christmas, we do keep it to foods like sinigang or dinaguan and pancit, very traditional Filipino foods. And everyone is assigned a dish, make enough for the family. And that's what we eat for Christmas Day. But we still spend the night at whoever's house is assigned. And sometimes we'll play some games and we still watch football. <laughs> so yeah, I think I've always loved Christmas and the holidays and I consider myself lucky that I get to enjoy spending it with my huge family. Hi, my name is Lisa Dene. I'm half Filipino, half white, which is a mixture of German, Irish, Scottish, and I live in Pasadena, California. I was born and raised in Southern Orange County, and I celebrate Christmas. My mom's side, which is my Filipino side, we celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve. We would drive up to LA to spend Christmas Eve with my cousins, and my titas and uncle at my Lola and grandpa's house. Christmas growing up was my favorite holiday. I just loved everything about Christmas. The music, the lights, the movies. It was just a fun, big celebration. Lots of food, lots of Filipino food. We would have lechon, which is a giant roasted pig, and it was my favorite thing. That was something that I always look forward to. I was blasting the InSync Christmas album, and I would just run around the tree. So excited, waiting for my mom to be ready so that we can drive up to see my cousins. I love my cousins so much and still to this day we're all so close. So at this party at Lola and Grandpa's, there's a bunch of different families coming in and out of this house. In their garage, they would always have their friends over and play mahjong. And of course, we would have karaoke. Loved karaoke. I was born and raised Catholic, so we would attend Mass on Christmas Eve. When I was younger, my parents and I would always stay over at that house, which was such a fun time for me because my cousins all live around my grandparents' house. Typically, the schedule would be arrival time to the house whenever and then eating food at 10 p.m. Again, like we're all in Filipino time, so just late celebrations. And then everyone would go to midnight mass and then we would come home and open presents. As we've gotten older, the gathering has gotten smaller. That's sadly mixed with family drama. My parents are no longer together. So for the past few years, it's been my mom, four of my cousins, and mom's siblings. My love for Christmas has dwindled 
However, as I've gotten older, I've been playing into the nostalgia and the magic of Christmas that I fell in love with and trying to find that on my own, whether it's making new traditions or bringing things back that I used to do. So watching Christmas movies and listening to Christmas music, going to see Christmas lights. I used to love going around each neighborhood and finding the best Christmas lights. Of course, it's been difficult with my parents now being divorced and having separate Christmases. Now that my dad lives in North Carolina, sometimes it's not easy to go see each other because of how expensive flights are. I will say that holidays in general have become better within the last year, and I'm very excited to celebrate Christmas this year. The menu has changed a little. We definitely have a mix of Filipino and and American food now, other than it being a smaller group of us. We also don't do karaoke anymore. My grandpa passed away in 2019, so since then, a lot of things shifted, but we're all working together to find that joy and that love that we all had, not just the kids, the adults as well. I think we're getting to that place of of finding that holiday spirit again. And I'm very fortunate to be close to my family, especially my cousins. When it comes to work around this time of year, as an independent artist, it's so easy to get caught up in our industry's break and take that as I need to work extra hard these next two, three weeks because no one else is working. But I'm glad that I have set that boundary so that I can enjoy the time of the year that I really love and just be present it's a lot easier when you're younger to be present. So I'm happy that I am taking that step that I need to be present and not feel guilty for being present. Hi there, this is Tony, Tony Nguyen for my full name. I am Vietnamese American. Around this time of year during the holidays, my family celebrated Christmas it was more of a connection to the culture that they came into. They're both immigrants from Vietnam. They're among those who migrated during the war and post-war. So I think for them, Christmas is such a special time of year because it's the time where every generation of our family gathers to come together and celebrate. Even though it's not something they probably grew up with, I still see the look in my mom's eye of how important it is to her. To her, it's so significant because this is the only time of year that all the family comes together and everyone, in a way, puts aside their differences just to eat. So basically all we do, keep it real simple, we invite the entire family over. It used to be at my mom's house. And we'd have both a Vietnamese component of the dinner and an American component, especially now that people are getting older and like people are marrying other non-Vietnamese people, like white people. One corner, there's Vietnamese beef stew that my mom made, and then the other corner would be a pot roast that my cousin-in-law made. It's always a great time in that sense of the food. It's always the best of the year, and it's such a connection to the generations that came before because my mom came with her mom, my grandma, and there's all these recipes that have been passed down, like the egg rolls, the stew, the mashed potatoes. Like Everyone is bringing their story into it, and even though we've never told these stories Exactly. There's just such a beauty in like, oh, we're telling it through food. It's the unspoken. Now, it's changed a lot over the years just because of everyone getting older and honestly growing apart. This is my first year not going home for Christmas. I'm actually continuing the tradition in my own way, have my own Christmas, my own diaspora dinner, if you will, where I cook all the food that my mom made, but through my Vietnamese American lens. It's different because, if I'm being honest, because of the political situation in the United States and how divisive it's been, actually a lot of my family is choosing not to come together to avoid fighting and arguing. So it's definitely different from when I grew up in that sense. That sense of we're going to put aside all of our differences and come together, it's getting harder and harder to do that. So this year it's very different. But what I will say is it leaves room for us as the next generation to create our own traditions and not be so trapped. Because even though those dinners were really important to me growing up, 
Nowadays, I have learned that, especially as someone who is queer and has had trouble with acceptance from my family, it is nice to be able to take what I love from my family, all of the food, the togetherness, the communal aspect that we so desperately lack in our society today, and bring that to my chosen family, the friends, the people who in New York need a home. And that's something I will happily inherit from my mom. The need to be a home, bring people together, be that light for the family. Hi, I'm Sherry Lin Lee, a Chinese Mauritian now living in Los Angeles. Growing up in Mauritius, this was my favorite time of year. It was the summer holidays, Christmas, and all the tropical fruits were in season. Lychees, my favorite, longans, mangoes, cherimoyas, passion fruits. Many of us would have fruit trees and would share the fruits with our relatives. The white winter Christmas we saw in movies was about as real as a cartoon. Around our Christmas tree would be lots of presents we had bought and wrapped for our cousins, which we would eventually exchange at one of our family gatherings. I remember helping my mom pick toys for my cousins and being a little jealous that I couldn't have those for myself too. But my parents had made sure we understood that they couldn't afford to give us every toy we wanted. But if we were really good all year, Santa might bring us something from our wish list. On Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, we would get together with family for a beach picnic or a casual dinner and exchange presents with our cousins. There is no traditional Christmas menu, but we'd often have a very casual barbecue. It was the same for New Year's. Nobody dressed up. We were all in our flip-flops and shorts given how hot it was. The mosquitoes loved it the most. My family's Catholic, so our celebration would include a mandatory mass on Christmas Day and New Year's. During that period, we would also visit elders or relatives who lived alone and spend a little time with them. In 2002, there was a sudden death in the family just a few days before Christmas. My mom's uncle, who loved Christmas, had a heart attack at only 52. Christmas was never the same. The magic was gone. Since then, my mom has always been too sad to even bear having a Christmas tree during the holidays. I'm sure we still received presents and went to family dinners, but I don't remember much. The next year, my dad started taking us on family trips over the Christmas holidays. I didn't realize it at the time, but I think it was probably his way of trying to bring back some of the holiday spirit for us kids and taking mom's mind off her grief. Plus, it was a special time for us to bond as a family. This tradition continued until my brother and I went to university, and I definitely have very fond memories of those trips. It took a while, but I think my mom is finally at a place where she can enjoy Christmas again, although she still hasn't put up a tree. Now that I live in the US, Christmas is in winter. It looks just like the movies. People dress up for Christmas and New Year's. It's awesome, but it's definitely a different vibe. A few years ago, my family came to visit and we got them to experience a white Christmas in the mountains for the first time, and that was truly special. I am no longer religious, but I still celebrate the holidays. My husband and I would usually record some holiday music and release them over the holidays. One of my absolute new favorite Christmas traditions is having my husband's Christmas cookies. It's a recipe that he inherited from his mother who is of Czech descent and they are the most delicious cookies I've ever had. They are only allowed to be made between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So that's something I look forward to every year. Thank you for tuning in to our first holiday special. I hope you enjoyed hearing everybody's stories and how they celebrate the holiday season. Inspired by upcoming guest Rod Kim's submission, I have decided to take the week between Christmas and New Year off. I will be back January 8th with another nuanced conversation. Again, if you love our podcast, a rating or review would be great. I hope you're having a happy and safe holiday season with loved ones, and I wish you a happy and healthy 2023. Music in this episode has been provided courtesy of 23rd Hour. I'm your host, Sherilyn Lee, and this was the Nuances Podcast, Beyond First Impressions with the Asian Diaspora. Thank you for tuning in. Let's let a day together be Christmas. Listening bells are swinging. It's the merriest time of year, and I can't wait to celebrate with you here. If you're wondering what to get me, it won't come in a box with bows. You will even find. is for it's much 